Hi, and welcome to Practicing Painting Subtle Light. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist in The Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now, and I'm here to empower you. So I just thought I'd make a video about uh, working out and practicing painting something that I am very uncomfortable doing. I am not very comfortable painting subtle dynamic light. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean, what, what, what uh, the types of uh, lighting that I am comfortable with. First, the, the, I, I really like really sharp dynamic light uh, with, a, with a clear light source and a clear shadow pattern. So for example, here's a, a, a tiny photograph. I kind of wish it was a little bit bigger. But uh, I, I see you can tell. Uh, so we have a key light and then darkness and then these shadow shapes, the shapes that this does. This is really, really clear. It's very, very understandable to me. Like I, I, I understand what this is. I, I, I know what these shadow patterns do. I know what I should do once I hit the light. And it's very simple because you only have to worry about what's going on in the light. Uh, let me let me see if I can find another. Uh, and here's another example. Here's another example of very cool, very dynamic light that I find very uh, uh, that I'm comfortable with, uh, because again, uh, very clear light source, and and the shadow shapes can all be kind of grouped together very clearly, very simply. And and uh, and and you can get a very uh, and and to me it's just clear, simple. I understand it. I could do this. Uh, so I I really like and enjoy painting very dynamic, exciting, dramatic light like this. Um, okay. So, but I wanted to do something more subtle. This is not what I mean. So here's an example of uh, not subtle light. Like, like, uh, by, by, uh, it's not that it's not subtle, I should say. It's just not dynamic, okay? So that's, that's what I mean. This is not what I want. I don't want a light source that kind of washes out everything, that it's, it's barely, like, like, like this is a front uh, light, kind of the way that I have the light on me right now. You can see the reflection in my glasses. The light is washing out all the shadow. It's supposed to not be dramatic. Um, if I had more lights, I could put this light over here. And then I could have like a secondary light come up here and make it look very dramatic. And then it'll be much a much more beautiful video, for example. I just don't have that kind of setup. At some point, maybe I will set my, 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 my desk area that way. But I do have light coming from over here. I have light over here, and then I have light over here. It, it just kind of washes out. Uh, this is not dynamic light. This is not a, a type of light that, that makes it fun to paint. It's very, very dull. It's very, very boring. There is no drama in this kind of lighting scheme. Here's another one. See, look, she is gorgeous. What a beautiful woman, except that the light sucks. Like, it sucks. Like, you look, it's just right on her face. It's meant to just not have any shadows. It's meant to emphasize her proportions, uh, the beauty of her face. It's supposed to wash out all, uh, as much detail as possible just to make her look as youthful as possible. So this is beautiful for her, but it sucks for painting. It's, it's, it's really uh, completely and totally boring, boring <laughs> uh, lighting. So what do I mean by subtle but dramatic or dynamic lighting? So subtle but dynamic. Um, and this is what I have difficulty with. So here is another uh, photo. And this is what I mean by subtle but dynamic. There are clearly two light sources here. One is the key light that is just, or, 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 uh, or rim light that's hitting him 
hard. And then we have his the rest of his face in shadow. But the shadow, unlike the dynamic, dramatic lighting that I showed earlier, this has, you could see his entire face in the shadow, which means that the entirety of his face is, 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 is 99% of his face is all in shadow and it's lit through bounce light or ambient light. And that, and, and then within the ambient, with that, within the shadow there, it, it's much more subtle. It's a little bit more like that boring washed out light. Uh, but because of the extremes in the dynamism of the, 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 the lighting, uh, it's much more interesting. There's a little bit more drama. There's a lot more dynamics in, in it. But there is a, uh, the, the, in, within the shadow is where all the detail is in. And all of this area, that is to me the hard part because unlike when you're painting light, there, there's something about the way my brain just doesn't quite understand what to do in the shadows when I'm painting. So to me, that's a huge flaw in, I mean, it should be like everything else, but, 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 but my brain doesn't want it to work that way. Okay, so here's another one. And again, mostly in shadow, dynamic, because there's a little bit of a light source here and there's a, and there's a, and there's a light coming in here, but the rest of the light is coming from ambient light. It's coming from uh, the, the, the shadow. She's in shadow, so the light is coming from, from the sky. And so the rest of her is in shadow. See, again, it, all this subtlety right here how would i paint it i don't know I, that that's where my that's where i i have i have problems here and again real i love this i love this photo i'll probably do try try this one out at some point but painting this one but um again mo 99% of her is in shadow and all, everything that's going on in here is very, very, very subtle. And then we have this really cool, dynamic, very bright light source here, that which is great. I love that. Okay, so that is what I'm talking about when I, when I say um, uh, subtle but dynamic. There is subtlety in the shadows, but it's still very dynamic, very dramatic. There's still that element of drama from the extreme shadow, extreme light. This is extreme light and subtle shadow, like like uh, a bright shadow. And uh, that is something that I am really, really, really uncomfortable with. Something that I that I that when I look at it, I don't know what to do. So today I am going to paint a a. Uh, a a drawing or a, 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 a painting of that kind of uh, uh, dynamic portrait and I'm gonna be doing this uh, for this video so and, and 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 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on it and then I'm going to um, explain what I'm thinking but I'm not going to do it as I'm doing it. I'm going to, it's going to be sped up. You're going to see me working on it. And then I'm going to talk about what I'm thinking before I do it and, 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 and what the theories are so that you could understand how I'm approaching this, even though, like I said, I've, I've, I've never, re I'm not really good at doing this. Uh, uh, this is going to be, um, something uh, new or, or, or rather something that I'm weak at. So I don't even know if it's going to turn out okay. Um, if it doesn't turn out okay, I will explain what I will do next time to fix it or do something uh, the next time. But um, for now, I am going to try my best to do the painting and then um, we'll see how that goes. All right. So uh, I'm going to get started now then. 
So as you can see here, I've already done a sketch. One of the reasons why I started with the sketch already in here and I did it off screen was because I didn't want to spend most of the time just drawing. Uh, I just wanted to, to just do the painting. So uh, if you've seen me draw plenty of heads, uh, if you want to see me draw more heads, uh, let me know on the comments. But um, otherwise, uh, I'm just going to, whenever I'm going to be doing these painting videos, I'm just going to do the drawing off screen and then I'm just going to paint. All right, here we go. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the environment. And the reason why I'm going to paint the environment, even if it's going to be blurry or unclear, it's just going to be swashes of colors, is because the environment lights the shadows. So because it's going to be mostly shadow and with some dynamic light coming in, everything that happens in the shadow is going to be uh, influenced by the, in the, the, the environment. The light hits the environment. Uh, so like the sunlight is going to be an outdoor thing. So the sunlight hits the environment and the environment, the sky, the ground, the trees, the walls, everything uh, gets hit with light and then the light bounces into the shadow, bounces into the person. Okay, so you have the color of the person's skin, but it's being influenced. It's, it's, it's got lights coming in onto the, that skin tone. So the skin tone is complicated, and maybe I'll talk about that later, but the environment colors influence the color of that skin. That means that the sky is going to influence it, the ground's going to... So we need the environment. I need to know where what colors are around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the the colors of the background when I start painting into the into the shadows and I'm going to color pick the colors in the environment and and and, and then bring them down a little bit and then put it on the person so that's what I'm going to do that's the idea just have color picks uh, uh, already that I'm going to uh, use to um, To, for colors uh, in the shadow. Okay, so now uh, I, I finished doing the background. So now I've got uh, plenty of color to pick from when it comes to painting the the shadows. So if you're curious, by the way, which brush I use, I'm using the gouache brush. Um, I like the gouache brush. Um, I could now use all the brushes, including the oil paint brush. Uh, I, I taught myself how to use all of the stuff. Um, but I, I, what I, the reason I like the, the gouache brush in, in uh, Clip Studio is because it has a texture to it. It, feel, it, has, it, it gives a texture to it, but um, and then the gouache blender makes makes everything kind of you could blend it, it's beautiful it works so well they the, both of those work really well together uh, but I'm probably gonna use mostly the regular pencil brush for most of the time and then I'm gonna go in with the, the gouache brush and I'm gonna add textures to it and and, and add um, I don't know brush strokes and things like that so I'm going to experiment because the last painting I did was completely and totally using the gouache brush with a little bit of other brushes once in a while. Uh, I'm going to uh, now I'm going to try using the just a regular pencil brush this time around. Um, oh, and the other reason why I like using the gouache brush is because it doesn't go down extremely opaque. It just it leaves streaks. And um, and I and I, I like that too. So uh, the next step is going to be kind of putting down some sort of mid tone for her, like just a, a regular mid tone. I almost always get this wrong. 
this is i found one of the most important parts of the painting because if you put if you get the wrong mid-tone you have to fix it and then fix it again and fix it again because all you're doing really is painting on top of the mid-tone and if you get the mid-tone right for the, the first time most of the time for the rest of the painting um you're not having to adjust uh but if you get the mid-tone wrong then you have to constantly adjust it so um i'm going to attempt do my best to get a good mid-tone so I don't have to be constantly adjusting it. All right, one of the things that I wanted to do when I was putting down this, this um, uh, mid-tone layer is I wanted to make sure that some of the background came through so I didn't want to make it completely opaque. I wanted to keep the the, the, the background um, slowly coming through. The reason I'm doing this is because I want color variations within there. Um, I, I, I'm, I've seen and heard and, and, and watched a lot of painters. They, they like the, 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 here, the, 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 the reason is this. Skin, walls, objects of any kind uh, they don't have a single value, a single color, a single hue. Um, there is subtle variations in everything. So if you look at a wall, the wall itself has gradients and variations in, in, within, within it. So like just a, like a flat matte surface, even a flat matte surface has so many subtle variations of color and light working on it that even if it is completely matte and completely one value, the, the background, the, the light, the, the shadows, like whatever is around um, is, 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 is putting different variations of color and things in it. So what I'm thinking when I'm putting this value down is, 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 is uh, not trying to get it all one matte surface. I, I, I want the variations of, of the background coming through and, and hopefully it'll stay all the way through the painting, um, giving me a more natural feel. All right, so now what I've done is I've kind of put some more local colors in here. Uh, some just kind of a little bit of the lighting situation so it's really sloppy it's meant to be sloppy it's not, I'm not trying to be perfect uh, the idea here is if I can just blob light shapes like like paint shapes in the right spot and I squint um, the, the thing should start coming together right like like this should have light and this shouldn't have light and this area is kind of this kind of general value and color. This is kind of happening here. So it's just a blob of shapes and impressions of, of light and shadow. So I'm not trying to be perfect here. But the other, one of the things that I wanted to, to kind of place all this stuff down is because, um, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I did make a, a layer here and I put it on, on clip. The, it's a clip layer and it clips to, the, to this layer down here, which basically means that it's not going to paint outside of this layer, right? Like this, it's, it's only going to paint within this layer. And the point of that is so that, um, uh, uh, well, it, besides the fact that it's contained, what I'm going to do in this layer is I'm going to use the airbrush tool and I'm going to um, kind of uh, wa put like a wash or airbrush of, 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 the, of the light color, the color of the light, the, 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 the ambient light coming into this, this area of the, of the, of the painting. I'm going to have some of the, the ambient color come in here and some of the ambient color coming in here. So I'm going to try to, in order to, to create a gradient and in order to create um, the, the values of, the, of, of in here, this, this um, mid-tone color, um, to give it a tint, 
uh, uh, because that's what light does it, is it, it tints the the um, the local color of of whatever object that that it's um, it's landing on the light tints it so in order to to create that same effect I'm going to take the airbrush tool and I'm going to try to tint a little bit of those areas the way that light would and then from there I'm going to use that color as uh, something to to color pick uh, moving forward uh, on on the rest of the of the paintings now now I got to decide at this point whether or not I want to tint say the the lips if I want to paint the lips yet or something like that so I gotta I gotta decide that at this moment but maybe not maybe I'll just go for it and then and then decide that later so um, okay so that's that's let's let's get to that then okay so at this point uh, I am going to start introducing some some line work uh, and it'll be using black line so I'm going to to use that I'm gonna put in some black lines in here just to give me a little bit of a guide and throughout I'm going to go back and forth in the line new line layer just adding new line line work in and then taking it out and then putting it back in and I'll be going back and forth uh, because I like that look with a little bit of line in it and I and I honestly think that in a lot of paintings a lot of um, a lot of painters actually used a lot of line like even in the Renaissance uh, I noticed that um, in the Rena Renaissance painters the, the 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 brown school of painting when they are putting details inside the shadow and uh, what they tend to do is just they drew the they drew the things like like for example if if uh, if, uh, if uh, a person was being lit from from one side and there was shadow on the other side and you saw their eyes on the other side uh, they were just drawn there was no uh, modeling in it it was just it was just a drawing of that eye and and, and it's really interesting so and then we have people like uh, I believe it's a uh, uh, both JC Leindecker and um, Dean Cornwell they they tended to 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 use a little bit of line work too and it and it has great effects so cool so I'm gonna uh, I'm not gonna try to do something like that they're, that they're they're really beyond my ability to do and maybe someday I will just do a study of one of those just to try to one of those guys just to try to try to wrap my head around what they did but um but that's I'm, I'm gonna be doing some line work and because it's so stylized and cartoony anyway I'm not doing a realistic painting um, I can get away with it Okay, so um, I've done as much as I could. 
Uh, you saw me playing around with a lot of light, a lot of stuff. So one of the things that I noticed was that the more details and nuances and lights and little things that I was putting on the face that I saw in the reference, um, the reflections, the lights, all these things, uh, the more I put in, the worse it got. So I ended up having, I washed all of that stuff away as much as I could. Uh, and, uh, and, and that seemed to help. So, uh, the, so I guess less is more. Um, even in, in, the, in the light, I mean, even in the shadow where lots of stuff is going on, um, less is more. Like just, just the gist of, of, of what needed to be in there. Um, one of the, I'm not sure how much line work I should leave in here. One of the things that I ended up doing was I ended up combining the all my layers into one layer. Um, as you can see, I have two versions now. I have th this version here, which was the original version, and then now this new version, which is the one that I'm working on now. I, and the reason why I did that was because I um, I didn't like some of the proportions that I did on the on the face. Finally, I, I made the the nose a little bit bigger. I made the mouth a little bit bigger. Um, one of the I, I flopped it, and then I realized that one of the eyes was smaller than the other. It was much bigger. Uh, things like that, and I. At this point, I'm just looking for things to finesse and, 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 and what did I miss and what didn't I get. And uh, so far, right now, I'm a little eh on, on the whole thing. Like, I'm, I think that, that it came out okay, but I think more practice is needed. So I'm going to do a lot. The last thing I'm going to do, it's, I'm, I'm on the home stretch. Um, I may start inventing little bits and bits details in here to try to fix something or, or make adjustments to, to stuff that I think needs adjusting. And um, so far it's taken me two hours to do this. So um, so I'm going to I'm going to do one last thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the color dodge tool. I'm going to try and I'm going to play around with it. See if, if it helps, if it pushes things, if it makes things more interesting or not. What the Color Dodge d tool does at the very end is adds one l element more of gradient. So again, like I said, like you know what I said earlier about having a, a thing, a matte surface has many textures, many things. Well, what the Glow tool does when used judiciously is um, it may help pop some of the gradients and add a little bit more of that um, uh, uh, color variation within the thing. So, um, and, and emphasize certain things. So I, I hope that it does a little something. I'm not sure if it will, but we'll find out. All right, so uh, that's it. I, I am, I am, I am done. I'm not a hundred percent sure if 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 this was successful or not. I I, I still got to process it. Uh, currently, I am um, I think it's okay. The, my takeaway is more practice is needed, so I'm going to keep keep doing these sort of things, trying to get better at capturing this stuff. Um, uh, it was successful in a couple of ways for me. First of all, um, I didn't start with a black and white. Second, I picked the colors myself. I, 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 I did the, the color variations. I, I did the observational stuff myself. Um, I, uh, 
but again, I, I think some of the things that I need to to work on, especially now that I'm looking at it and I'm and I'm and I'm fixing the face and stuff, is that I gotta again be even more careful with the pencil drawing when I'm beginning the drawing. Like I need to make sure that the drawing is going to be what I want. But again, um, learning the the subtleties of the of the of 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 what to leave out less is more how subtle should the lighting be it, it's really tricky this is why i'm i'm having such a difficult time with this how much information should i put in there how much uh detail is in the shadow is it better just to leave it um, one of the things that I noticed when I was putting in, I, I ended up using the Glow Dodge tool, not the Color Dodge. I turned on the Glow Dodge and I, I found that the, the Glow Dodge um, added so, some of that extra little variation that I was unable to capture myself. Um, and uh, the problem is I don't want, um, when I'm doing this in with uh, traditional tools, I would like not to be able, I'd like to be able to get the same effects without the digital glow thing right so uh that that's that's something that i'm going to keep working on uh uh so practicing more with traditional doing the same kinds of things where where it's much more subtle uh mid-tone shadows as opposed to um very subtle mid-tone shadows while still having a dynamic light source uh a lot of practice needed but uh, this is where, what I've got. This is where I'm at. This is what I did. Um, I think some of the most successful things was the color variation bits. Uh, I, I, think I, 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 I think I may have overpainted that area where I lost some of that underpainting, some of that see-throughness, that, that transparency that I, that I wanted in the colors. I think I overpainted painted it a little bit and I kind of regretted it and I wanted to pull it back but otherwise it's okay um time to keep moving time to keep on working I'm gonna try a different one next week and I will I hope this has been helpful so one of the things uh that I've just recently done is I've launched a uh my uh first drawing course so if you're interested in learning more about drawing, if for example, the drawing course is for beginner, like like below beginners kind of thing, where if you're not, uh, if you want to learn to draw, but don't know even how to draw a stick figure, if you can't draw yourself out of a paper bag, if you don't know anything about anything about drawing, this is the course for you. I go through everything you need to know just to learn to have the confidence to start Okay, so that is for you. If you want to learn to draw, if you want to get to the point where you're doing these kinds of experiments for yourself, then you need the foundations that will get you to that place. Um, so if you're interested, the link to the DrawFu course is going to be in the description of this video. Um, and uh, Depending on how well that goes, I'm going to just keep going and do the, the level one because this is level zero. Level one is going to come become next and then level two is going to come after that. So uh, the more support you give me in that course, the better and more, uh, the deeper the, uh, the, the, the courses will become so that you are able to get to the point where you're doing experiments yourself. Uh, and, and, and the idea is to also help you teach yourself. So I teach you, but I also teach, I give you the foundations and the, and, and the things that you need to know and how to know them and the confidence that you need to get to where you want to be. And then uh, little by little, I give you more and more information. The information itself is important. However, the time you, you put into drawing is more important. Because it doesn't matter how much information I give you, if you're not going to put in the time, it's not going to help you. So uh, that the link to the course is at, in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. All right, bye.